Welcome to Kempo for Intermediate, Lesson 4. I'm Sensei Roger. And I'm Paul. And we're here to bring you an awesome lesson today. We're going to just go right out of the gate and we're going right to the quote today. Yes, we will bring you some martial arts, so don't worry, you'll get there. Uh, but the quote that I picked was from Howard Thurman. Right, we're approaching, you know, African American Month, right? So I wanted to share your know, quotes from African Americans in history that made a difference, All right. not just for the African American community, but to just this country, to mm -hmm. the world. Those, right. you know, I wanted to share something of those leaders. So I thought this was an awesome quote. Don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Mark, got anything to share on that? Well, you can't be productive if you're not alive. <laughs> you have to have energy, you have to go, you have to take action, and I think that's what he's talking about. You can't just lay around and let somebody else do everything because you just, you're just dying your own way. Here's the thing I know where he's getting that at, too, is because I have read a little farther of Howard Thurman. He is talking about pretty much, you know, in other words, is God's giving you something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you don't go do what you are passionate about, then you're not, you're not finding your purpose. Right. And we need people to be in their purpose. That's why, you know, I go to people that I see they're walking in a purpose and making a difference in, mm -hmm. in other people's lives. Right. I go to them, I say, thank you for being in your purpose. I'll go over and be like, hey, thanks for being in your purpose. Right. You know, walking in that purpose, mm -hmm. you made a difference in my life. Right, right. And then they, they really appreciate that. Because sometimes you can tell people, man, that's awesome, you did a great job, you mm -hmm. did a great job. Yeah. And then they get big headed. They're just walking in the purpose that God set them for. Right, right. And that's why I wanted to share this. And uh, one more thing, all, the other end of that is, people have a desire to drive to do something, but other people are like, you know, you really can't do that. Or they kind of push, don't let people push you down. Yeah. You got something in your heart, go do it, and because you know it's the right thing to do, not because someone says yes or no. You got to do it because you're, you're led to do it. Exactly. Oh. All right, as you guys know by now, we don't just do the martial arts. We want to do something that make a difference in your life. All right. so that's why we put these quotes in there. I don't want to just say, here's the martial arts. As you see my channel, it has kind of matured through the time. I've been doing this for like nine years. And it, it really has matured. And uh, I really want to give something positive back. There's so much negative on YouTube and right. the world. All right. And you know what's funny is those negative channels, they're getting like millions of hits. All, right. all these subscribers. Mm -hmm. And then there's a few good ones that got a lot of hits and all that too. But you see some really great channels out there that don't have a lot of subscribers right. or a lot of views. And it's like, I watch it, I'm like, why does this have more? So, but like this says, if it makes you come alive, go do it. All right, all right. Don't just go, well, it's not working. And then change your format just mm -hmm. so you get more views. Forget about that. Do what you know. And if you're gonna spend your time watching negative videos, what do you what do you have in the long run? What is it? What if you you gain nothing? But yeah. if you're gonna to watch to gain purpose or a better character or learn martial arts, now you've gained something from the time you spent from the YouTube. I mean, right. you have to pick, you know, your poison, so to speak, or your your goals. That's right. Oh yeah. Guess what? I did promise you some martial arts. Huh? Yes. We're gonna deliver it right now. How's right. that? I know we talked a little bit, but here right. we go. What we're gonna do is a backhand hook block. This is something we do in the Kempo. A lot of the stuff you see in the Kempo, you've seen in uh, Kung Fu. Sometimes you see it in Jiu Jitsu. Sometimes you see it in uh, your traditional karate systems. Yeah. Uh, I had a comment in our last uh, video. It was pretty cool. I liked his comment. He gave us a little education on what Kempo is and karate is. I knew what it was, but I didn't share it all. Karate means empty hand. He even put the kanjis. I thanked him for that. I like that. I thought that was pretty awesome. All right, all right. But then kempo means fist law, law of the fist. You know, so that's more your Chinese right there is the, you know, kempo. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. So the law of the fist. All right. So what we're gonna do is a hook block. So throw a punch at me. See, I'm hooking it. I'm not just blocking it out of the way. Throw a punch. Snap it fast. See, I just push it now. Snap it. So now, see how I can set it up with something else? Mm -hmm. 
You guys thought I was going to go into something there, didn't you? Ah! I was about to bite him with it. <laughs> Alright, but anyhow, grab my shoulder. See, I could just go like this, but then I can go like this, and I can move my body. However, you know, but the idea, let's go with the basic. Let's go from a horse stance, because this is a practice stance. What I like about doing things from the horse stance, you're building your legs, so it's purpose. But you also get to focus on just the strike or the block that you're working on. Right, right. If you're going here trying to worry about your legs and all that, you might not get the idea of it. Right. But from the horse stance, pick up your hand like this, like the backhand parry, but you're hooking it. Like that. You want your arm to curve like that. Your hand, I mean, not your arm, but your wrist. Okay, let me show you another purpose of this. I love this. Chinese sword, throw a punch. Block it in, I chop, I hook my hand like this, I can bring him down. I'm hooking like that on the back right. of the hand. So there is your backhand hook block. I love this one. So I use this a lot. When he showed me this, I was like, that's really not going to have a lot of pull. It's surprising how much pull you get with your hand like that. He, yeah. he yanked me over the first time he did it and showed me the move. I was really surprised. Get a hold of my MD with the other hand right now. I want to show you from the inside. What's nice about this, I can sit there and do this, but watch this. Yeah, it breaks it right down. It's that's without me moving my feet. All right, all right. Okay, go ahead. Now I could have went right through your head. See that palm that went right through? I hit right in the chin. Bam! That's where our kempo moves. Yeah. We follow up with a half fist, or also known as a leopard fist. All right. But that's not the move we're going in today. I went a little too far, didn't I? <laughs> all right, I want to do a review of the technique kempo shield. This is a move that pretty much all Kempo systems teach is Kempo Shield, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. It's simple, you see this in other systems too. So it's throwing a punch, you're going to step, you're going to upward block, reverse punch. We're going with that bow stance. You guys are probably wondering what this is for. Why is there tape on the floor? So I did a video out there on my other channel, the Grimes Factor, and uh, I did it. I said, uh, what's up with that Kempo stance? That's why I titled it. I just put it on today. But the thing is, when you're in here, you're in a heel to toe, that's how you want to be, and you want to go in your bow stance. I'm just going to give you that, so I'm going to give you on that. Go watch the other video if you want more. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, that's it. You step in that bow stance. What move are we doing? Kempo shield. Oh, you got lost, guys. All right, Kempo shield, block, and then punch. Good. All right, now this is great, because you can do this if someone's throwing a punch at your head. Uh, block that, bring it up past you, rib shot. Alright, throw the punch. So from this point, you can now throw the other punch. Now you notice I'm not punching straight in. So if I'm punching straight in, his ribs go this way when he breathes. Mm -hmm. If I punch at an angle, his ribs do not go this way, that's a good way to break a rib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or two. But you, what you're doing is separating the ribs. Right. So you don't have to hit as hard to get more of an effect. Efficiency mm -hmm. is something we want to learn. Right. We don't want to just go out here and bang out, ah, yeah. it's not yeah. working. Efficiency. Right, right. This is why I love uh, Kempo. It's a great system. Sometimes mm -hmm. you see guys that just want to be flashy and right. showing off. But right. is, is their Kempo really as effective as they're, they're showing? I yeah. don't know. I don't know them personally. I've seen it a lot of times from some of the guys who are known as the greatest in the Kempo system. I've seen them beat the crap out of their Uki and everything, mm -hmm. showing this stuff and they're flashing it out like this. But are they really going to be that effective against a real attacker? I don't know. I just know that they're very fast right. in what they do. I'm right. pretty sure that they will be effective, mm -hmm. but that's not me to be flashy. Throw a punch at me or something. See, I just want it here. I didn't have to go, hello! Oh! I'm not picking at anybody else. I mean, that's their style, it's just not my style. If that's what you're looking for, you're in the wrong channel. Right, right. What is that? I don't know where that came from, but I gave it to you. Here we go, Kempo Blitz. I like this one. We're going to do is uh, lean a little bit, lock, and punch. Now, here, remember I said this Kempo Shield is great against punch. You could do it against someone just being ready. Mm -hmm. So, in sparring here, Maybe my hands are like this, mm -hmm. I go like this, he brings his hand up, I punch him. So we can do that. And that's why I came up with Kempo Blitz, because, you know, I named it. I didn't come up with the movement. We've been doing this in the Kempo a lot of times for tournaments. 
I seen a lot of guys doing this stuff. Right, right. But this is one of the moves that was my go-to move for a while. A lot of guys realized what I was doing, and I had to come up with something else. <laughs> you can't just do one thing. They studied you, yeah. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do this without moving the feet right now. We're gonna turn, block, reverse punch. Hammer fist could go right to the nose. And then you could do the ridge hand, right to the jaw or the temple. Now, if you're throwing a ridge hand, you gotta be real careful not to fracture your mm -hmm. hand. Right. All right, so again, block, uh, block up, punch, hammer, ridge hand. So, so from here, if I'm going like this, I could be in movement already. I'm here, I'm here, I'm up there. So you gave me the back of the skull. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hit this part, but I'm going to hit wrist right. part if I need to. Right. Knock them right out. I like that because there's options with that move. If you miss one, you got something else coming yeah. after fast. Yeah, you're bound to need a hit in there. Oh yeah. I, you know what's funny? I was teaching a 12 year old. We were doing a move with a rolling back fist. And he, he just tapped me right in the right spot behind the head. I was like, uh. <laughs> and then I felt like you know, like liquid going down, like draining. Mm -hmm. And I felt weird, man. That kid almost knocked me cold. He didn't even hit me that hard. He was like, boom. I was right. like, right, right. When you're talking about power before, I was thinking about football. You watch pro football, those guys run, charge for a tackle, and he throws his body in. What does he do? He usually bounces off. He doesn't, because he, he doesn't wrap the guy up. There's no method in his madness. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Just the right contact, that's what's going to bring the guy down, not just throwing your weight at him. Be efficient. All right. Come alive, right? And go do it. All right. <laughs> but you got to be efficient. That's what we're looking for. Remember this Kempo for intermediate. We're not in the beginners no more. So we've got to talk about this stuff. We've got to be efficient. See, a lot of people have seen some of my beginner stuff for years. See me karate for beginners, which was basically Kempo. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing this, you know, they didn't see what was coming. My students, they see it, you know, because I've run a professional school. I'm not somebody who just came off the street, bought a gi, yeah. and just put stuff together, which I've been accused of, but that's okay to me, right. because you know what, they had no idea. Right. Just like when in the street people see me, they had no idea. You know, if someone wanted to mess with me, I needed to defend myself, I would have the element of surprise. And that's it. I'm not going to be out there bold. Look at me, I'm a martial artist. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. Do what I love to do. And that's it. That's what the world needs. They don't need another guy being macho about the martial arts. So. With that said, let's go to long one. We got part one through four. Today we're going to do something a little bit different this time. This time I'm going to have Paul do it. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of teaching experience. I know a lot of times I'm showing this stuff in the video. And Paul's doing something, he's a little bit off from what I'm doing. You see that. That's great for you to see. But now I want to show you how I would be as an instructor. So right this fo or for these few moments, I'm going to ignore you guys <laughs> and focus on Paul. Okay, so you can see, this is for you, so you can see how things work with All right. that. All right, Paul, go ahead and start with your bow. your foot. So you here, right? You gotta either move this foot a little mm -hmm. bit or this foot. You gotta yeah. get yourself in the position. Yeah, I just forgot That's what I was it. doing. Good. Oh, nice. No, I thought you were standing right I, I wasn't there. Don't worry about me. Keep going. Uh, I know where I'm at. All right, go ahead. Here it is. There. Good. All right. Let's go over this again. I want to help you with your stance. Okay. So that's what I do a lot of times, guys. And I'll, I'll watch somebody do what they remember. Okay, so you're uh, just trying to remember it. Mm -hmm. There's no sense in me beating him up on his stance and all that until he remembers this. Right. You know, so now let's work the stance a little bit more. Right. All right, so from here, pick it up, back. Okay, now from here. Now, yeah, bend that. Good. Now turn in that bow stance. Turn that foot. Put the heel on the floor. Lighten up. You don't have to be as deep as I do. Okay. You know, see, the thing is, I, I could go like this for your kata. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be like that. Like I said before, it's not traditional. Come up a little bit, it's not comfortable for you yet, is it? Okay, so turn the foot. There you go. We gotta make it comfortable for you. That's okay. actually stretching my calf. Doing we'll bring it a little closer. <laughs> there you go, that's what I'm saying. Now back straighter. Oh, okay. Like this, when you're here, back okay. straighter. Okay, good, now go ahead. One, two, punch. Okay, now move your foot. That's it, you gotta bend those knees. 
One, two, you turn. Good. Go with that stance. So you see that idea? Turn your hips a little bit more. That's what I'm talking about. All right. The foot too, like this. You don't have to be so far apart. Okay. So you guys watching that, you might have been having a hard time mm -hmm. doing that here. You're trying to do that and you're falling over or stretching your calf. Right, you right. can't get that heel down. This is it. You don't have to go that far. All right, good. What's the next point? <laughs> Almost forget it after I say I that. Okay, turn that foot more. There you go. All right, now at this point, right, what I do is turn it like a horse right here. So I'm here, horse. Adjust your feet. Adjust it. Move it out of the way a little bit too. I do it as I turn, mm -hmm. but if you need to, just slide your foot. Now turn like that. Get okay. in that bow stance. Okay, up, punch. Good. Step back left. Up, punch. Okay, now we're going to move. This is the new part for you guys now. Taking the right foot, we're going to step over here into the back wall, which is wall for 6 o'clock. You're going to be in a horse stance, downward block at the right. Now from here, pivot your hip to that bow stance, then punch with the left. Okay, now step back with the right foot, downward block with the left as you turn that foot, or bend that foot more, and turn this one. Downward, and punch. That's it. Okay. So there's the new parts. So Paul, I just kind of discussed it a little bit with him. He didn't know how far I was going to do it. But you see how I work with people one-on-one? -on -one? That's why you cannot replace the studio experience. You guys aren't getting that part of it. Mark, I think I have to put some talcum powder on my socks here and make me slide. So slide. Yeah, but if I'm, I'm if sticking on the mat. You might do the complete <laughs> and then we'll be, And I'll be picking him up off the mat. <laughs> trying to stitch them back together or okay. something. All right, I'm going to go over it again. So from here, we come out, we come in, lock, punch, step back to the right, right, left, punch, from here, in, out, turn, punch, in, out, punch, turn with the elbow. So you can adjust that foot, up, punch, step back left, up, punch. Now move the right foot to six o'clock. Downward block. Hip the hips, punch, downward block, punch. There it is, long one, part one through four. We're gonna get this, we're gonna continue to do this till we're done with the cut. Right. Like uh, we said before, if you guys have a hard time with all this, you, know, you can just go back and watch your videos. Right. Revol rewind this video, check it out. Right. If we're going too fast for you, rewind it, check it out. Some of you already been doing that though. And I just also wanted to tell you guys to check out our other channel again. Remember, I said that about this. It's the Grimes Factor. I put the dot, capital letter, Grimes, or G, then R-I-M-E-S Factor, the Grimes Factor. You'll see it in the, check out our playlist too. What I'm gonna do is put some of these videos that I have, the martial art videos, on the Grimes Factor and put it in some of our uh, playlists on this channel mm -hmm. so you guys will have that link to it. Right. You'll know what channel you're on when you hear me say the Grimes Factor. That's what I mean. So, And also follow us on Twitter. It's under Shodan1197 and like us on Facebook. And uh, contact us too. I uh, said so you guys contact us through, uh, through the comments or just do a direct message on YouTube. But you can also contact us on Shodan1197 Nation, N A T I O N, at yahoo.com. So check us out. Yep, if you haven't subscribed, do so. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Man, I messed well, that I up. <laughs> My own catchphrase. I messed that up. <laughs> Subscribe, guys. Thanks for watching. God bless.